those of you that can stand, please stand for the reading of God's word, if you can. And the word of God reads as such, and he came to the sheep pens along the way, and a cave was there. And a cave was there, and Saul went in to release himself. And David and his men were far back in the cave. And the men said, this is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy unto your hand for you to deal with them as you wish. And David crept up, David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. After which David was conscience stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. And he said to his men, the Lord forgive that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lift my hand against him, for he is anointed of the Lord. These words David rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Now watch this. And David went out to the cave and called out to Saul, my lord, the king. When Saul looked behind him, David was bowed down, prostrated before him with his face to the ground. And he said to Saul, why do you listen? Saul, why do you listen when men say David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into the hands in the cave. And so urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lift my hand against my master because he is the Lord's anointed. Yes. Thus in the reading of God's word. Father, we thank you now in the spirit for what you're doing. God, I feel you all over me, God. Have your way in this place, God. Speak to your servant, man, for I am nothing, but you are everything. God, I'm yours, Lord, all that I am, all that I'm not, everything that I've got. I belong to you. I rest in your hands, God. Use me as you see fit, oh God. Put the words upon my lips, and I shall speak only what you put upon my lips. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, fill the atmosphere. I pray, break every yoke. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Just touch your neighbor and say, I'm coming out of hiding. I'm coming out of hiding coming out of hiding. My brothers and sisters, I just believe that everyone should be happy. I believe that, that you earn it, that you earn it. You should be happy. You should have a smile on your face. You shouldn't allow anybody to come into your life and steal your happiness. I believe that. I believe that you are blessed and highly favored and it's not you shouldn't let people come in and steal your blessing. What God has for you is for you. Don't allow folk to come in and steal your joy, steal your blessing, snatch your happiness away. God gave it to you. You earned it. You went through all you went through to get this far. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to be blessed. Everything you have that folk are jealous of, you don't hide it. Don't put it under a bed. Let the world see it because God gave it to you. You deserve to have what you have. Yes, I'm blessed and highly favored. Yes, I am anointed. Yes, I am gifted. Let the world know who you are. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed to say it. Don't be ashamed to walk in it. You are who you are because of what God said you would be. Do I have a witness today? Don't let nobody steal your joy. I'm here to let you know if somebody's sitting next to you trying to steal your joy, say the devil is a liar. I will let nothing steal my joy. You don't know the hell that I've gone through to get to where I am right now. And I'll be, I'll be crazy if I allow you to steal my joy. Do I have a witness today? I don't care if you don't have money in your pocket. Don't let money steal your joy. I don't care if you don't have a job. Don't let your children steal your joy. Don't let your husband or your wife steal your 
about friends not wanting to be your friend because you got a new car or because you got a new dress. Wear that dress, snatch that dress, and wear it well. Drive that car right down this street and let people know. Don't get big on it, but drive that car and let them know that I'm blessed and highly favored. I believe that. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Don't let folk just come into your life and snatch the little piece of happiness that you have. You ain't got much. You've been through a lot. And what you got, you earned it. You cried for it. You worked for it. Nobody gave it to you. You had to earn this little joy that you had. It ain't much, but it's mine. It may, little, may look a little raggedy to you, but it's my joy. And I'm going to hold on to the joy of the Lord. Do I have a witness today? The Bible says that David, he, he had this joy. Even though he was working in the sheep's pit, he still had joy. He enjoyed fighting off bears. He loved what he do. Even though he wasn't looked at much by his brothers or his dad, he loved what he do and, and what he did. And the Bible said that he had the favor of God on his life in everything that he did. And so people were always jealous of David because he had the favor of God. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but, but, but when people see that you have the favor of God on your life, people will be jealous of you. And they're not jealous of you, they're jealous of the favor on your life. Don't get it twisted. It's not because you look good. It's not because you drive a nice car. It's because they see something that they wish they had. They see the favor of God. They see God about to explode in your life. And they're mad because they don't want you to explode. And so they'll say anything they could to stop you. But you got to have enough sense to say, I will let nothing separate me. That's why he says, come to me, all ye that 
somebody that you can talk to. And the Bible says that, that he, he had Jonathan. And the Bible says that he talked to Jonathan. But, but, but sometimes talking is not enough. Folk are so jealous and so hateful that even after your conversation, you may feel better, but they're going to sort you out because they don't want you to be happy. You see, that's what the devil will do. The devil will sort you out. He will come into church and sit right next to you. He will call you on the telephone. He will sort you out. He will come up in your job and get up all in your face. He will sort you out. He will stand right next to you on the bus. He will sort you out. The Bible says that Saul began to sort out for David. He was looking for David because he hated the king in him. He hated what he was going to become. He wasn't it yet, but he was going to become it. And he wanted to stop him from becoming what God wanted him to be. You see, some of us don't understand. You are progress in making. God is still working on you. You're on the potter's wheel right now, but he's molding you and making you to what he wants you to be. You're not it yet, so you can't judge me for where I am right now because God is still working on me. He's not done yet. He's still molding me, making me, and sometimes he got to break me, but he's still working on me. Everywhere we go, we see him bumping into jealousy. And the crazy thing is that David began running from, from, from Saul to the point where he ran to the enemy's camp. The Bible said that he found himself in Ziglag because he was running trying to get away from Saul. Could you imagine, you know, just trying to get away from people that you know hate you. You find yourself in the enemy camp. You didn't, you didn't mean to get there, but you were running just trying to get away from hateful folk. Right, right. From folk always trying to, to get up all in your business. That right, right. don't let you live. They keep holding on to your past. Right, right. And you run from them and find yourself in the enemy camp. Yeah. But, but, but look at David. Even in the enemy camp, he's still blessed. Some of you may be in a place you don't want to be, but God will still bless you. You still have some habits, you still got some things in your life that need to change, but he's still blessing you. And to other folks, it don't make sense because you're still doing the things that you know you shouldn't be doing, but God is still blessing you because he's still working on you.
him, but he was still in a dark place. Because people will take you to a dark place. They will take you to a place that you don't want to be in. You are trying to still figure out, how did I get where I am? How did I get this dark place? I'm educated, I'm smart, I'm creative. How did I get to this dark place? in a cave, a dark place with people, but he was still, he still felt alone. Could you imagine being with somebody and still feeling alone? Could you imagine having friends that say that they love you, but you still feel alone? He was in a dark place in his life because he was running because he respected the anointing yes. Yes. that was on Saul. Yes. Yes. It wasn't that he couldn't have killed Saul, yes. but he had so much respect for his anointing. Yes. Yes. So it goes to show us that there's some people in positions that are anointed. Right, 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 right. But God is still working on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're in the position, but they're not ready yet. The Bible says that he was in this dark place. And the Bible said that he saw an opportunity because Saul needed to find some place to go to the rest. Isn't it amazing how God will use the simple things in life to bring your enemies to you? And it was amazing that when he was in the cave where David was, now he got to go to the bathroom. It's not that he couldn't have stopped anywhere along the way. But he brought him to that place. And at that time, because in that place, in that time, he was about to do something in both of their lives. That's why we have to be careful what we say about people. Because the same person you're talking about, God may bring you both to a same time and the same place. Be careful what you say about people. Don't, don't, don't say too much now. Because God may bring both of you at the same time and the same place together. It's an awkward moment yeah. where Saul is using the restroom. Now David sees his opportunity. But because of his respect for his anointing, he understood that you can't touch God's anointing. You see, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter if I'm a pastor or not, you must understand, it's not me that you got to be fearful of. You got to be fearful of my anointing. It's not me that you got to worry about. Don't worry about me. You got to worry about my anointing because my anointing will make the difference. So he respected his anointing even though he saw an opportunity. And the Bible said because he was so persistent, he saw his opportunity. His people's friends were in his ear. They were telling him, this is your chance. They was in his ear. He saw his opportunity. When people are in your ear and you see your opportunity, you got to be careful because you will do something that you will regret. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because every opportunity is not what God wants you to take. That's right. That's right. And so they were in his ear and he saw his opportunity and he reacted by cutting off a piece of his garment. Yeah. Yeah. But because he respected God's anointed, he, was, he felt bad about what he did. Yeah. Yeah. And 
And the Bible said that he felt so bad that he began to say, listen, I feel bad about what he did. But his friends were saying, no, man, you should have killed him. You should have took this was your day. The Lord has made this day happen. But, but, but David understood that you can't listen to what folks say. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You can't praise God because everybody else is praising God. You got to know why you're praising God for yourself. You can't come to church because everybody else is coming to church. You got to have a reason why you come to church. If you don't have a reason why you come to church, then you ain't going to find nothing when you get to church. bad about it. The Bible says that in the place that he found himself more comfortable in because of how he felt a cave, when he saw his opportunity, it was the opportunity not for him to get Saul, but it was his opportunity to come out of the cave. Wow. Yeah. Wow. God used Saul to bring David out of the cave. You don't understand that sometimes God will use people to bring you where God wants you to be. Come on now, Pastor. It may be somebody that you don't expect, somebody you don't like, somebody that's not that's been talking to you, but talking about you. But, but God will use that person to bless you. And so now David finds himself outside of the cave. And it's when he came outside of the cave, it's when he came to his senses and he realized that was his opportunity to go to Paul, to Saul, and ask Saul, why are you chasing me? Right. Have you ever sat down in your chair and asked the devil, why are you chasing me? <laughs> what have I done to you that would make you pursue me so much? All I want to do is be better. All I want to do is have a little more. But you keep pursuing me. And the more you keep pursuing me, the deeper I go into a cave. <laughs> Some of us are in a cave and we don't even know it. Sitting in a cave praising God. A deacon in a cave. A usher in a cave. In the choir, but in a cave. Jesus. And when God brings your opportunity for you to come out, you have to take the opportunity. So David took it. Because it was already predestinated that this time and this place that God would bring his enemy to his knees. Amen. And the Bible said that he began, he, he, he began to call out to Saul. He began to call out to Saul so much that he found himself on his knees bowing before Saul. Amen. But it wasn't Saul that he was bowing to. Right, right, right. He was bowing to Saul's anointing. Yes. Oh God, I know I'm about to make some people mad. Because there's some people in your life that you may have to bow to. But you're not bowing to them, you're bowing to their anointing. There's some people that you got to go and make amends with. Not because of them. You have to do it because you want God to take you out of the cave. says that he found himself on his knees crying out to Paul, asking Paul, why Saul, why are you pursuing me? Why are you trying to kill me? Why are you doing this to me? I respect your anointing. You're a king. I'm not the king. You're the king. I, I know I'm going to be the king one day, but you're the king. You're in charge. I'm not the leader. You're in charge. Because for some people, it's important for them to be in charge. But you got to let those that want to be, be in charge, let them be in charge. Go ahead and be in charge. If that makes you feel better about yourself, you take the position. Go ahead. You be in charge. Because it doesn't matter who's in charge. It's not going to stop me from being a king. says that Saul felt so bad that he
began to cry out to David. It will surprise you that the people that you think hate you are waiting for you to come to you. They don't know how to come to you. They don't know how to say what God has already put on your lips to say. The Bible says that when he began to talk to Saul, Saul cried out. He cried out to David and he said, David, I am so sorry for what I've done. I know I've chased you. I, I, I know I tried to steal your joy. I, I, I know I was jealous of you. And he says, I'm sorry. Because when he was saying that he was sorry, he realized he was saying that he was sorry because he knew that his time was up. Don't you understand? People do what they do because they're desperate. They know that their time is up. They know that they're not anointed. They know that the blessing of God is not on them because so they get angry and they want what you want because they want to be blessed just like you. And they will do anything to get it. But you got to be wise enough not to fight them and not to cuss them out and not to get up all in their face. But trust God. To show David what was inside of him. Because it was then that David understood that it was because Saul knew that David was going to be king. And he knew he had to pass the mantle to David. And he really didn't want to pass him. So he figured if I can kill him, then I can keep it. But you don't understand for that if you kill me, it's just going to fall into my next generation. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, I wish the church would understand that. Yes, yes. If you kill me, don't you understand? It will fall on my children. Yes, yes. And if it, don't, if it don't go through my children, it's going to go through my children's children. Yes, right, right, right. It doesn't matter. You can kill me as the pastor, but my daughter will rise one day. Yes. My son will rise. pass the mantle and he didn't want to pass it so he figured that I might as well kill him because I don't want him to come out of hiding I want him to die in his cave and people are so mean today that they want you to die in your cave but you got to be smart enough and say I'm not going to let you make me die in my cave I ain't going to stop coming to church because of what somebody said. I'm not going to die in my cave. I'm not going to stop praising my God because they're not doing what they... I'm going to come out of the cave and I'm going to be what God wants me to be. Touch and say, don't die in the cave. Don't die in the cave. God is about to bring out of hiding. Yes, yes, he is. He's using, he's using the souls of life to bring you out of hiding. Some of us are in the cave because there are things in life that we need to learn. David had to learn what it would be like to really be a king. So he needed a cave to teach him how to be a king. Yes, yes. If you don't have a cave in your life, you'll never know how to be a real king. Right, 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 right. A lot of us are kings, but we never been through nothing. So when we get our kingship, we don't know how to treat it because we never had it before. And so he had to bring him to that point in life. And it wasn't as if he wasn't blessed and highly favored, but even blessed people got to go to caves sometimes. And so he went into this cave 
And at the end of the story, we find Saul realizing what a lot of us have to realize today. And watch this. We are realizing this is tough. That it's time for you to pass the mantle. Yeah. Amen. 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 You have been carrying the mantle, but you lost your anointing. You've been carrying it, but you lost your anointing. You're not effective anymore. Jesus. And it's hard to hear that. That's kind of hear, hard to hear that I'm not effective. I'm not what I used to be. Saul made some bad choices. And because of his choices, he wasn't effective anymore. So you got to understand when you're not effective, it's time to pass. Come on now. Come on. You can't carry it all your life. Sometimes it's not that you've done anything wrong. It's just your time is up. That's right. That's right. That's right. I done made a whole lot of people mad. But you gotta understand, you gotta know when it's time to pass it on. You can't carry it all your life. You got to understand. That's why we're training young people. That's why we're teaching them. So we can pass it to them so they can take it to the next level. You can't carry it all your life. Your steps is getting a little short. Right, right. You're running out of breath. You can't keep up like you used to. Right, right, right. It's not like there's something wrong with you. can't keep up. Right, right, right. But it's all right. You, your work right. will speak for you. Yeah. You don't have to do nothing but just sit right there and, and let your work speak for you. Impart yeah. wisdom to those that you have passed the baton to. want to give it up. But look at this. I'm going to end on this note. Thank God for Jesus. Watch this. If it wasn't for God, he would have died with the mantle in his hand. And the legacy of Israel would have died with him. Take this with you now. If it wasn't for God, watch this. Saul would have died with the whole legacy of Israel. If I don't understand when it's time for me to pass it on, then my Lebanon will die with me. But thank God for Jesus. And some people he has to snatch out of the way. So that he can put the next person in place to carry the mantle. Now watch this. I've been in hiding because I'm the next person that's about to get the mantle. But I got to be in the carry for a little while until the mantle is ready for me to get. Don't snatch the mantle. Wait for God to give you the mantle. Because when he gives you the mantle, can't no devil, can't no demon take it from you. Because when God has blessed, no man can curse. He understood that Saul didn't understand that his time was up because he kept fighting. He kept chasing David. And even after this, he, he, he still struggled with giving up the mantle. And so God had to literally take his life so that David can walk into the place where he was supposed to be. God does everything perfect. I 
am here today because it was predestined that some people, I'm going to leave that alone. Let us all stand.